Have you ever wondered about the untold stories behind the well-known figures of history? Today, we delve into one such tale, the story of Keturah, Abraham's often overlooked second wife. Her life, shrouded in mystery, reveals not just a forgotten chapter in a patriarch's life, but a profound lesson in the movement of destiny. Let's dive into the heart of the story, Abraham's marriage to Keturah. We see the genesis of this story in Genesis 25 verses 1, where the Bible says that Abraham married another wife, whose name was Keturah. You see, after Sarah, his first wife, had passed away, Abraham was alone. He was an old man by then, his life a journey of faith that had taken him through unimaginable highs and lows. Yet, in his sunset years, Abraham's heart found room for love again, and that's where Keturah enters the picture. Now, Keturah wasn't just a passing character in Abraham's life. She was his wife, a companion in his later years, and together, they started a whole new chapter. It's kind of fascinating when you think about it. Here was Abraham, a man who had seen and done so much, and now, in the twilight of his life, he was starting anew. It's a reminder that life can always surprise you, no matter your age. But who was Keturah, really? This is where things get a bit more interesting. The Bible doesn't give us a lot of details about her, which leaves us with a lot of questions. Was she from Abraham's homeland, or did he meet her during his travels? What kind of person was she? Did she know about the incredible journey Abraham had been on with Sarah, about the promises God had made to him? We will be exploring some of these questions later down in the video. However, one thing though is clear. Abraham and Keturah's union was fruitful. They had six sons together. Think about that for a moment. Six sons. Each of them would go on to have their own stories, their own families, spreading Abraham's lineage even further. This wasn't just a marriage. It was the start of an entirely new legacy. In these sons, the story of Abraham branched out in new directions, each one a living testament to his and Keturah's union. You see, in this story, we can find layers of meaning and purpose that extend far beyond the surface that gives us a possible glimpse, perhaps, into God's mysterious plan. The story of Keturah and her children with Abraham is a remarkable example of God's abundance and the unexpected ways in which his plans unfold. Initially, Abraham struggled with the promise of having an heir as he and Sarah faced the despair of childlessness. Their journey was marked by moments of doubt and impatience, as seen in Abraham's brief relationship with Hagar and both Abraham and Sarah's incredulity at God's promise of a child in their old age. Yet, with Keturah, we see a complete turnaround. From a place of doubt and longing, Abraham's life moved to a place of unexpected abundance. This transformation in Abraham's life echoes the idea that God is capable of doing far more than we can ask or imagine, as seen in Ephesians 3 verses 20 and 1 Corinthians 2 verses 9. It reminds us that the plans and blessings of God often surpass our expectations and understanding. But as I said previously, there are some questions raised about the mystery and identity of Keturah herself. Her story, nestled in the pages of the Bible, is a puzzle that has intrigued many for centuries. So, who exactly was Keturah, and what can we uncover about her origins and identity? First off, let's talk about her name. Keturah's name in Hebrew means incense, suggesting a sense of pleasantness and aroma. Some interpretations, such as those found in Genesis Rabbah, which is a religious text from Judaism's classical period, comprising a collection of ancient rabbinical interpretations of the book of Genesis, relate her name to the Aramaic word Ketur, meaning not signifying that she was bound in loyalty, not having relations with anyone else from the time she left Abraham until her return. This interpretation aligns with the view that Keturah could be Hagar, Abraham's previous concubine, returning under a new name. This theory, however, isn't universally accepted. Many scholars argue that Keturah and Hagar were distinct individuals. This differing opinion happened even among the Tanaim, which were the early rabbinic sages. Some believe Abraham had three wives, Sarah, Hagar, and Keturah, while others argue that Keturah was indeed Hagar, renamed to reflect her virtuous qualities. 
These interpretations are based on different readings of Genesis 25 verses 1, which mentions Abraham taking another wife and the Hebrew word for concubines in Genesis 25 verses 6, which some suggest refers only to Hagar. Regarding her tribal affiliation, there's less clarity. The Bible doesn't explicitly state Keturah's ethnic or tribal background. This has led to various speculative theories, but none with concrete evidence. It's possible she belonged to one of the Canaanite tribes or groups that Abraham encountered in his travels. While according to some Jewish tradition, she was a descendant of Noah's son Japheth, but this remains an educated guess at best. Keturah's role in Abraham's life is also a subject of much discussion. Despite her seemingly secondary status compared to Sarah, Keturah's impact is significant. Through her, Abraham fathered six sons, who would go on to lead their own tribes and nations. This further cements Abraham's status as a patriarch with a wide and varied lineage, fulfilling God's promise to make him a father of many nations. Now let's go into the lives of Keturah's sons in a bit more depth. Keturah and Abraham's union led to the birth of six sons, each of whom played a significant role in the historical and cultural landscape of their time. Their names were Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. These sons, and in particular their descendants, would go on to become the progenitors of various tribes and nations, significantly impacting the region around them. The most notable among Keturah's children is perhaps Midian. The Midianites, descendants of Midian, played a crucial role in the biblical narrative, especially in the story of Moses. Moses, a prophet, leader, and one of the key figures in the Bible, married a Midianite, which ties the story of Keturah's descendants directly to significant events in the history of Israel. The other sons, though less prominent in biblical narratives, also had their own importance. Genesis and 1 Chronicles list seven grandsons of Keturah and Abraham, including Sheba and Dedan, who themselves became significant figures. The descendants of Dedan were known to have formed their own tribes, such as the Ashurim, Leitushim, and Lamim. These tribes and their movements added to the complex socio-political fabric of the ancient Near East. It's also fascinating to note that some historical sources suggest that the Punic people, who played a significant role in ancient Mediterranean history, were descended from Ephah, one of the grandsons of Keturah and Abraham. This connection illustrates the far-reaching influence that Abraham's lineage had, extending beyond the immediate geographical and cultural confines of the Israelite narrative. Moreover, the story of Keturah's sons and their descendants is not just a tale of lineage and ancestry. It's a narrative that underlines the broad scope of Abraham's legacy, showing that his impact wasn't limited to his direct descendants through Sarah, but was far more expansive influencing a wide array of peoples and cultures. This aspect of the narrative reinforces the idea of a shared human heritage that transcends individual family lines. Additionally, some 18th century theologians, including the English theologian John Gill, speculated that African people might be descended from Abraham and Keturah. While this theory doesn't have a solid historical basis, it indicates the global reach and enduring interest in Abraham's descendants. I believe that the relationship between Abraham and Keturah teaches us some lessons by illustrating a profound truth about faith and the ways in which God's purposes are fulfilled, often beyond human comprehension. It touches on the idea that God's plans are intricate and interconnected, often spanning generations and involving seemingly minor characters who play crucial roles in the unfolding of his divine narrative. What do you think? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, please like and subscribe for more content just like this. Until next time.